in summary, esophageal tube scan, super easy, potentially life-saving. Depth of insertion uh, into sorrow, we T-R-U-S-T. So um, we would contend that the trust uh, methodology is probably the best way at looking at um, the positioning of the tube, the practicalities of doing it, especially within your own centers, might be challenging, but it's something to keep your mind on um, if you really are in a pinch and you want to make sure. Um, and then, you know, tracheal anatomy is something that um, is a good idea to practice many times, regardless of whether you're doing it clinically or with ultrasound, because when you do need it, it's one of those things you don't want to have to be overly uncertain about, obviously. Quick bonus points here. What's going on with this? patient where I'm looking, I'm trying to see their trachea here. Beauty, I wish I had prizes. I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that brings prizes to anything, but yes, it's subcutaneous emphysema. So this is a patient that's got like a new mediastinum and emphysematous changes underneath their skins. So you're trying to see their trachea, but you can't because you're getting all these A-lines, right? It's almost like you're looking in the lungs because it's just all filled with air. So they, you're feeling all these crackles under your fingers. And so, yeah, it's a just nice little spot diagnosis for what uh, subcutaneous emphysema can look like in the airway. Here's my demographics. And, uh, you know, that's the intubated video in the background there. Where they're going from uh, not being intubated to intubated during that video. So thanks for uh, tuning in. Any questions? So this one here. I see the engine but they're right with the air in the sockets. Mm -hmm. Is that from the engine? Like, are, are we, we the, you're just talking about this stuff. Oops, why doesn't want to keep playing through? I don't know why it doesn't play through all the way here. This that, stuff, yeah. So that's all just the mucosal air interface there. So you're gonna get you're gonna get some fluid within there because it's in your esophagus, and you're gonna get some air, and so you get that bright all like shadowing down. Like if you look when that happens. You're, you're, you're getting shadowing down and almost like a beeline, right? That's fluid and air kind of interacting and causing that reverberation. Um, so you will often see that in a normal esophagus. Like if you ask someone to swallow, you will see that you'll get this like all of a sudden kind of like, you know, uh, bright line that shows up for a very transient second as the air kind of passes through that. But if there's a tube, then it should shadow down. If there's a tube, well, the tube, depending on what's filling in the tube, right? If you're venting this tube, you might get shadowing beyond it. If it's fluid filled that tube, then you probably will see through it. Um, but if there's a tube there, you're probably going to see that that circular structure like this with the air artifact. I mean, it's a, they're usually small tubes, so they often tend to be like you tend to visualize around them. Um, but what, what's what are you confused about? That, that might that be like oh, a double. Well, you're transiently seeing that. As a rule here, you're... Right. Not the tube itself, but if I just saw, like, the shadowing from an enormous tube, because Well, this is this bright structure here is not what you're going to see in a in an yeah, intubation. Yeah. No, it's more the shadow. Like, if there's a persistent shadow from the mucosa there. This, like this shadow? No, the, the bright but it's not a shadow. So that's not a shadow. That's like so a like beeline. A, yeah, exactly. That's like that's like where you will sometimes see a brief shadow. Like you're not going to see a persistent shadow though in your esophagus. Um, I guess one setting where you could would be if someone has a food impaction, then they can have like a dilated esophagus mm -hmm. that's filled with air. But that does look a little bit different. Um, I don't have a good clip of that to show you right now. But um, as a rule, like you're briefly seeing that bright structure, right? And then you kind of see it again. Like if you're looking in long enough, you're going to be able to tell that there's not a persistent shadow down there. And that's that bright structure you're seeing, sh like shining down more than shadowing down, I, I would say, is more of like akin to a beeline where you've got some fluid and some air and they're kind of interacting with each other. And then you're getting that kind of spotlight down. So in esophageal intubation, you should see... You should see... Beeline. No, you should see shadow. Okay. Because you're seeing a, a structure that's filled with air and not being able to see beyond it. Okay? Yeah. Yes. 
and it's really for the time. I mean, like the time yes. of the trade kill. Yeah. So the, there, there's been cadaver studies that, that have been done, um, and the time to take so so the precision is better with using ultrasound. The time to do the procedure is longer. So the challenge is, is in the real world setting. You could imagine a situation. So what they would do in those procedures typically is they would do like a crosshatch thing where they actually look at it in long and they look at it in trans and they draw themselves a little crosshatch, much as you would for things like uh, lumbar punctures and other procedural based kind of things where you're using a guided, it's, it's usually not done dynamically. Like you're not looking at the needle on your ultrasound passing through, although that's something you could do. Um, what they've done in the studies is actually looked at it more as a, a sort of static way of, of establishing the anatomy and then putting a needle in. Definitely their um, success rate was higher with ultrasound. They had less times where they went to the back of the esophagus, um, but the timing of it was, I think I want to say something like 30 to 40 seconds longer. Keep in mind that if you're actually doing this in an emergency, and I agree that 30 or 40 seconds is a longer time, how much time does it take for someone to get the kit get all this stuff prepared and all this kind of stuff, right? So so theoretically, now this is always depending on how these things actually work in real life. You can imagine if you had the ultrasound machine there, because you always have your ultrasound machine there in a critical scenario, you could be looking, getting your anatomy, drawing some lines, or even with a pen if you want, while someone's grabbing that surgical airway and getting it ready so that you are as clear as possible in those few seconds you're looking of where you're going to go. And your success rate will probably be a bit better. You can quickly say to yourself, I'm going to go two centimeters and I'm going to go right here where I'm drawing my little circle on their neck. And that's where I'm going to poke after I do my cleaning and stuff. So, so yes, it does take you longer because of course you're using a separate step that you're not doing as part of the other thing, but your success rate's higher. So it's a very philosophical thing, but it comes down to how do you use your time most effectively during an emergency scenario? And what exactly are we talking about, right? Are we talking about someone who's got, you know, um, no airway for a prolonged period of time? Are you talking about someone who has deteriorating airway? Do you have like, because some of these are, are descending pathways, right? You're trying to do an oral airway. You're trying to do a bougie. You're trying to do all these things that you may try before getting to that final step. Um, but if it's truly someone who's like, you're unable to pass anything and you've been you know, going on and on and on, hopefully at some point during that, there was a period of time where someone could put a probe on and just do some markings. So it's all about using other times more effectively. You, you very rarely walk into a scenario where your instant reaction is, I need to put a, you know, a needle into this kid's throat. It's usually coming into a, a sort of descending pathway of you know, numerous things that have failed before that. So it should be, planned out in advance.